So another old rule of money was, you know, you, you have to buy your house because your house is your greatest investment. And that's where I got into a lot of hot water in 1997 when I wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I said to people, your house is not an asset, your house is a liability. Because most people think their houses are assets. And that's not true. So the old rule of money was to buy a house. And the new rule of money is you have to know the difference between an asset versus liability. And these are very simple accounting terms. And again, I don't spell very well. So if I could explain very quickly why most people's houses are not assets. I'm not saying don't buy a house and not, don't have a dream house. I'm just saying no, there's an assets and liabilities. Because when you look at a financial statement, and this is my rough draft of one, this is the basis of financial intelligence, the basis of your financial IQ. This is why your banker asks you for your financial statement. Your banker does not ask you for your report card. The banker does not care if you had great grades or what school you went to. The banker wants to see your financial statement, income and balance sheet, because this shows them how smart you are financially. This is more sophisticated than just you know, your credit score. But anyway, financial statements has income, expense, asset, and liability. So when most people buy a house, excuse me, liability, when most people buy a house, you know, what you have here is a mortgage. And it looks like you have a house here which is an asset, but that's not really accurate. What determines if something is an asset or liability is the most important word in financial intelligence, and the word is cash flow. And we ask any accountant how important this is. So as a young boy, my rich dad very simply said, assets put money in your pocket. Cash flows into your pocket. And a liability takes money from your pocket. So if you're truthful about it, you say, oh, does my house take money from my pocket? And I would say for most people, every month, their house takes money from their pocket. And then the savers say, but my house is paid off. I don't have a mortgage on it but you still have expense, insurance, and upkeep. So the house is taking money from your pocket. So my point here is this. If I have a house and money is flowing out of my pocket, that house is a liability. So my personal residence, my home, is a liability. Now I love my house. I want you all to have your dream houses and all this. But I don't call my personal residence an asset. It's a liability. It's about $15,000 every single month whether I make money or not, that still the bank still wants to get paid, taxes still want to get paid and all this. Now, if I have an apartment house or a single family house and every month my tenant pays me money, then that same house is an asset. So, now, let's say the tenant walks out and stops paying me, that's when the house turns into a liability because I have no money coming in. So it's very simple. Rather than just say my house is an asset, you know, just you have to know today in the new rules of money what's an asset and what's a liability. Very simple rules are assets put money in your pocket and liabilities take money from your pocket. So when I ask most people, if you stop working today, how much money keeps going out? Where that money is still going out, it's a liability. And if you stop working today and money keeps, keeps coming in, that's an asset. Money is coming into your pocket. Assets put money in your pocket and liabilities take money from your pocket. The reason my wife and I could retire and when we did at a relatively young age, we had more assets than liabilities. The reason people are in trouble today, they have more liabilities than assets. So if you're going to be rich today, don't just say my house is a good investment. You have to ask yourself, is my house an asset or a liability? My wife and I have two houses, one, resi one regular residential house, one vacation house, but we have several, I think we have about 1,000 to 1,500 uh, apartment units that every month put money in our pocket. We also have stocks that put money in our pocket. We also have oil investments that put money in our pockets. So I work very hard at ac acquiring assets and minimizing liabilities. And that's the lesson on why the new information, the new rules is, are you must know assets versus liabilities. So the third new rule of money is, I think the big mistake is, 
I hear so many people say it's important to save. That's ridiculous. And the reason that's ridiculous is because what happened in 1971 is crucial. In 1971, the U.S. dollar stopped being money. In 1971, the U.S. dollar became a currency. And what that meant is Richard Nixon, in 1971, the president, took us off the gold standard. That's like giving an alcoholic free rent to the bar. Or it's like giving somebody who can't control their spending unlimited credit cards. So what's happening is all the savers today are losers. You know, the problem with 1971 is that the federal government keeps printing money, so the value of your money keeps going down. So these people are saving, 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 and if you notice, as the value of the dollar goes down, prices go up. So they call this inflation. You know, you look at in, in um, 1997, oil was about, I think, $10 a barrel. Ten years later, it's about 135 a barrel. So they say it's inflation, but really what it is, is the dollar's value coming down. So savers are getting wiped out today. So to keep saying to yourself and to your kids to save money, that is not uh, the new rule. That's an old rule. So a very big problem for most people is stop using the word save and use the word Hedge. You've got to hedge your money. Hedge against losses. Like when I buy a stock, I put a hedge in. I put a stop loss or a uh, put inside of it or a call. Whatever I'm doing, I want to stop it. So today, I don't save money. I'm hedging. So I, in 1997, I started investing in oil, gold, and silver. So as the dollar dropped, oil, gold, and silver went up. So I'm not betting so much on oil, gold, and silver, I'm betting against the US dollar. And that's why this idea that you're going to tell people you need to save money, that's really, really an obsolete idea, because the idea went obsolete in 1971. The US dollar in the last few years has lost almost 80% of its purchasing power. And the prediction is, because this has happened throughout history, it happened thousands of years ago with the Romans, with the Greeks, with the Germans, with the English, the Japanese, and the Chinese. Every time they've made money, money into a currency, something you could print at unlimited, every time they have, that has happened, the currency has gone to its true value, which is zero. So I am afraid as this economic volatility continues, the savers who were operating by the old rules of money are just going to get wiped out because the purchasing power of their dollar is going to go down. So even if the bank's paying you 5 to 10% interest, you can't keep up with the bank's printing money. So that's the old rule of money is saving money, and the new rule is hedge. You've got to be able to see what's coming up as something else is coming down. The last thing I want to point out to you on this idea of saving money is this.